Okay, in this presentation we are looking at random variables. In particular, we are looking at continuous random variables and in fact normal random variables. So what we have here is x and x is a normal random variable with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Okay, so that's zero sigma squared. Just uh, quickly, let's compare that to the standard normal random variable, the z variable, which is 0 and 1, or which is to say 1 squared. Standard deviation is 1, the variance is 1. Okay. So what we're asked to do in this question is find the expected value of the absolute value of x, which is to say e of the absolute value of x, the expected value of the absolute value of x. So just to make life simple, what we are going to do is we're going to let x equal sigma times z, where z is the standard normal random variable. z is normal random variable with mean 0 and variance equal to 1. So if you're familiar with the standard normal random variable, you should be fairly familiar with where this is coming from. And remember, for x, mu is 0. Okay? So what we can say then is that the expected value of the absolute value of x is equal to sigma times the expected value of the absolute value of z. So what we can do is follows. We can state the expected value of absolute value of z is the from zero or minus infinity to infinity. This expression here, this is t times the probability mass function of the standard normal random variable okay so what we're going to do is find this first and then what we'll do after the fact is multiply it by sigma okay later on so this actually should be fairly familiar with with you might have seen it before just as a quick remark though the only difference here is that this is not t this is the absolute value of t okay so that's an important matter now, just as a sort of quick remark, what we have to do to proceed with this is actually sort of contemplate what we have here. So essentially what we have to do is sort of remember that this is actually, in both cases, two component parts. It, what we have here is an even function, the absolute value of t and also the expected value of minus t squared divided by 2. Okay? So for t that is a negative number or t is a positive number, this will be an even function. Okay, the squaring actually is the key thing in the second component there, that exponential term that makes that a even function. So an even function times an even function is an even function. So what we have here is essentially the integral of an even function. So what we could do with even functions when they have limits from minus a to a, where f of x is an even function, okay, what we could do is simplify matters by getting an integral from 0 to a and just multiplying it by 2 of f of x dx. That's essentially what we're doing here. This is a sort of par for the course with regard to the integrals of even functions, okay? So what we're going to do there is multiply our integral by 2 and just adjust the limits of integration accordingly. Okay, so in this case, what we have here now is t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, thanks to those new limits of integration. That means the absolute value of t is simply t. Okay, so 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi that can be just readjusted to being 2 divided by pi so just a straightforward re-expression of that term there so this is the key part here now that is you know I, i've sort of jumped a, a little uh, jumped ahead a little bit but that is really a straightforward integration question so this is the key part here. This is the solution to the definite integral. So I have that constant term, the square root of 2 divided by pi, and then I have this definite integral, which I've yet to evaluate. So in the integral, or the main part of the integral is, the main solution to the integral is minus e to the minus t squared divided by 2. And what we have to do is evaluate it at 0 and infinity. So when we evaluate this expression, minus e to the minus t squared divided by 2, when we let t equal to infinity, Essentially, what we're left with is e to the minus infinity, which is 0. When we evaluate that at t equal to 0, what we end up with is e to the minus 0, which is e to the 0, 
and that's one. So we have zero minus minus one, which essentially this whole thing just resolves itself to one, okay? So all we're left with was this constant expression just before it, square root of two divided by pi. Now remember, this is the expected value of the absolute value of z. What we have to do to get the expected value of the absolute value of x is multiply what we have there by sigma. So overall, the answer is sigma times the square root of 2 divided by pi.